Hello everyone, Darko2012 here with Global Government News, and I am kind of making a two-parter of this article slash video. The first part is the video um, with Alex Jones speaking, and then this one will just be uh, uh, me just kind of reading this article here. And all these links right here are all evidence of what they've been doing. Um, the government and New World Order, as far as wanting to, it's all been building and culminating. They've been, do, it's been documenting, you know, what they're, uh, what they want as far as censoring and banning free speech on the internet and regulating it and filtering it. So, um, but anyways, here we go. It says, uh, the Western world from Australia to the United States, uh, UK and parts of Europe are moving in a unified front towards dictatorial internet censorship. Australia has led the way to spread outcry from its populace by, quote, filtering out certain banned content. In the United States, Senator Jay Rockefeller, in continuing his family's tradition of oppressing free human humanity, has pushed forward cybersecurity legislation that has already passed the House. He has done so in the name of warding off ghastly cyber, quote, attackers, conceivably confronting for al-Qaeda while you ushering in a means to restrict free speech and expression online for the general population. And I am um, just switching to the New York Times article posted, uh, published Tuesday, February 9th. Actually, it was um, February 4th, 2010, sorry. And it's titled House Passes Cybersecurity Bill. And uh, I actually, I knew about this, but I couldn't find it as far as it being passed. And I went on the... Uh, I went on the government track uh, website and the Open Congress website where you can look at all the bills and uh, see the current status of it. And it said that it was still in committee. So I, I didn't even really, I mean, I was aware of it, but I didn't, I didn't really see anything. So here we go. This is kind of scary then. And this was all right before, you know, so this is January 4th. Now it's the 9th. And right after the 4th, they started uh, banning InfoWars uh, in New Zealand and whatnot. And, uh... And so, yeah, they're moving forward. Now it's now it's full-on attack on the Internet. So it says the House today overwhelmingly passed the bill aimed at building up the United States cybersecurity army and expertise amid growing alarm over the country's vulnerability online. Um, I suggest you please check out my other video I just posted yesterday. It's titled Internet Free Speech Under Attack by Government, Comma, Provocateurs. And... Um, it says uh, here, the bill which passed uh, 422 to 5 requires the Obama administration to conduct an agency-by-agency -agency assessment of cybersecurity workforce skills and establishes a scholarship program for undergraduate and graduate students who agree to work as cybersecurity specialists for the government after graduation. So, of course, like I said before in other videos, they use the best. They, take the, they pluck the best and the brightest to come work for the fascist neo-Nazi government industrial complex of our hijacked republic. As officials puzzle over how to defend the nation from enemies, they are often imp impossible to pinpoint, the lawmakers behind the bill said. Investigating in uh, cybersecurity is the Manhattan Project of our de uh, generation, of course, because it's the biggest threat to our freedom. Uh, it's the biggest threat to, to their agenda, I'm sorry. And it's the biggest uh, expression of freedom that we have left. Going back to the article, it says, with Obama's support, most of the developed uh, world has accepted plans for government-approved online activity and Pentagon-monitored Internet traffic. And this is the story. Pentagon secretly goes to war with the Internet. New $30 billion electronic Manhattan project underway to prepare military and federal government for all-out cyber war. So when they said <laughs> Manhattan project underway in 2008, they really meant it because that New York Times was just the other day in 2010. And, uh, wow, that's crazy. The Pentagon is to spend $30 billion building a super-secret national cyber range in order to prepare for an all-out cyber warfare by using its conduct, uh, by using it to conduct mock online battles with realistic info warriors. The Def uh, Defense Advanced Research Projects, DARPA, that's our buddies. Previously, that's what I'm talking about, they, uh, DARPA, they, they, you know, they have all these breasts in the brightest of MIT and that. And uh, Stanford and all that, and and then they uh, they fund all that nice good research that we pay with our tax dollars to give them grants, and then uh, 
then they uh, use it for defense and how to and use it to enslave us and spy on us and take more freedoms away and then you get it in the form of GPS with little uh, blockers and and uh, little errors that are purposely on there so it's not really accurate and then you get like your little blackberries that spy on you and have mal uh, spyware and so by the time it gets to the public it's nice and packaged so that you can't really use it um, for what they're using it for which is defense and it says um, uh, DARPA are previously responsible for the development of uh, electronic surveillance programs such as Total Information Awareness and Matrix Lifelog, the brain machine infer interfaces has been ordered by Congress to create what is essentially a new internet as a cyberspace battleground. Going back, it says the U.S. and U.K. are facilitating the hijacking of what has, until now, been a highly democratic internet. Overall, it has been a technological godsend for bringing together communication and strongly expressing thoughts outside of the mainstream information available on television and print, which is correct because most people have flocked to the internet or um, are like refugees from the mainstream crap media that puts out just pure shit propaganda, and so they just tuned out. Myself, I've, I haven't watched TV in since spring of 2008 after I graduated college. Um, because of that, it's just pure crap. And I listened to Chris Matthews and MSNBC and Keith Bolverman, and I never really got into the whole Fox thing, although because I kind of smelled that they were just neocons the whole time. But then I realized that hey, the Democrats are neo-fascist too, neo-fascist pigs. So uh, yeah, it's on both sides, and so I just tuned out. And then I watched the History Discovery, and I realized that all of that was rewritten history and filtered out science. So. Um, yeah, people go to the internet now. While everybody's going to the internet, they're going to take that away from us, and then we'll have to go back to the printing press and the penny papers and all that good stuff, right? It says uh, now people are being forced onto the corporate-dominated internet too. Once again, in the name of security, internet freedom sacrifice at the false altar of internet security. Independent blogs, news sites, and online businesses will all be financially uh, disadvantaged by access fees not demanded of dominant entities. What is today outside the norm, uh, but well within free speech, will tomorrow be evaluated by politically correct criteria that will be used to identify sites to block and uh, users to deny access. Currently, a campaign is underway to convince the public to accept driver's license for the uh, they are they are of course referring to this time article driver's license for the internet um, yeah it says uh, basically you know you're gonna um, need to get permission from the government to use the internet and that is the first step towards just straight up tyranny man so there you go it says already government quote blacklists have been exposed on its list the usual suspects info wars and prison planet wikileaks.org and like referrals to sites like Infowars and Prison Planet are being denied, not only in Australia but in places like New Zealand, who have not adopted the same policies but do share ISPs, who have ordered the, the block all across the world. Wherever internet quote filtering and outright censorship has been phased in via libraries, businesses, airports, so forth, sites that are critical of government and are criti consistently blocked first. This has been true not only for Alex Jones' websites, but also like WikiLeaks, Electronic Frontier Foundation, EFF, Cryptome, and etc., etc. A common theme is not operating outside of law or speaking in extremities, but challenging the power establishment through distribution of information and or shedding light on its otherwise little-known unscrupulous activities. Though this Orwellian scheme has already been branded by the outrages of Cass Sunstein, one of the Obama czars, who has called for governments to ban, quote, conspiratorial theories and identify thought crimes, including a disbelief in man-made global warming and a belief in the basic goodness of sunshine, talking about vitamin D. And it says, uh, in considering how to eradicate outlaw beliefs, Sunstein believes, uh, or post it's the benefit of using bloggers to engage in counter disinformation, which is exactly what uh, I've been affected by. And uh, they are disinformation bloggers that get paid by the Pentagon to uh, come on here and uh, try to just attack people who are trying to get the word out. A, a very similar version of this strategy has also been adopted by the Pentagon and its InfoWars campaign. See, so there you go. Alex uses his most recent experience in an outright ban to uh, sound a warning that is an enemy among us. Internet censorship threatens to stifle out recent phenomenon of free thought and widespread information that has flourished on the internet. So there you go, people. They are on the attack and they are out. And there are um, people being paid to make stupid-ass comments. So just be aware and 
Thank you for